when world leaders and activists talk about combating climate change. Mitigating CO2 emissions. Carbon-free economy. Carbon neutrality, net zero. Their main goal is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Those gases from cars, oil refineries, cows, etc., all trap heat and lead to warming temperatures, causing more devastating natural disasters and drought and melting glaciers leading to sea level rise. According to the August 2021 UN Climate Report, the average global temperature has already been predicted to soon reach an increase of 1.5 degrees Celsius, only stopping there if countries make immediate, large-scale reductions. But do we have a clear picture of the world's emissions? The UN has asked countries across the globe to report greenhouse emissions within their countries to the UN, and they put that in a centralized database. We developed a model which would present 2019 numbers for countries that didn't report data from that year. And at that point, we were able to tally this up and come up with a global number. What we found is that there is a pretty significant gap between the two. The Post found that total global emissions are significantly undercounted and that there is a 16 to 23% gap in unclaimed emissions from 2019. Figuring out why the numbers are off might come down to a basic question. How are countries measuring their emissions? The most simple equation that many countries use is to take an activity like, you know, how many cows are there on pastures in your country? That would be your activity data and then multiply it by what's called an emissions factor. So per cow, we think that this much methane is belched into the air in a year. And then that multiplication more or less is your emission number. Obviously, that is a huge oversimplification of what is actually going on. Cows are not all the same size. They do not all, all emit the same amount of methane. Plus, that's assuming you have the number of cows correct to begin with. So this is the process by which a lot of errors inevitably get introduced. The alternative to using the UN's ground up method is the top down model, which uses satellite data. Scientists can now take satellite measurements of emissions over a territory of at least a large country, or atmospheric measurements, or both, and run them through a computer simulation and attribute where they came from. One of the drawbacks of that method is that not it doesn't help capture every country, every small nation across the globe. And that's one of the biggest uh, challenges that we faced in trying to find a global number. Currently, countries divide their land into managed or unmanaged areas. Land gets divided in the UN system into forest, grassland, cropland, settlements, those are cities. A lot of countries claim that the managed area is sucking a lot of carbon out of the air rather than emitting it, and so that can then be applied to lower the total emissions. But not all countries use the same approach. The US, for instance, almost the entire country is considered managed land. They can take any reductions from the land and apply it into their net emissions. But Australia does it differently. Canada does it differently. So there isn't an equal playing field for all these countries. And it's not a simple equation. Some land areas, like rainforests, are carbon sinks. The reason land is so tough is that A, it's full of scientific uncertainty. So what is actually happening with how forests, for instance, pull carbon in, but then give it up again if they you know, face drought or if they're chopped down or if they burn? Another issue is that the numbers are self-reported with little accountability. De Paris pour le est World leaders have repeatedly committed to lowering emissions in Kyoto in 1997 and in Paris in 2015. Under that agreement, that was the first time the world got organized to do something about climate change. And really, they all are driven by the will and the participation of the countries. You know, if you don't do this, there's no punishment except for sort of political um, being unpopular, being criticized. There's nothing, there's nothing other than that. We're already in a crucial moment where greenhouse gas emissions need to be drastically reduced. If we are wrongly calculating the emissions today, our policies that we should be adhering to for the next 50 years are going to be based on these incorrect numbers. So 50 years from now, we are going to be in a much worse place than our models or predictions are foreseen.